Here we are. Good and morning. Here. Good, Good morning, morning, Suzanne. Suzanne. I don't know how to get the glare from my face, my eyeball. You're just going to have to notice my shining left eye. Nice. Today, Deborah, we're going to be talking about the 34th Gene Key. And it's the beauty of the beast. Rawr. And um, we're moving from the shadow of force to the Cidic state of majesty through the gift of strength. And so since this key shows up in your profile, I'm gonna probably be asking a lot more questions, but why don't we get started with the, um, the shadow? Oh, Just get yeah. right into it. Let's <laughs> do, cause you know, spent a lot of my life playing with this one. I mean, not that we all don't, but you know, I just feel like it has particular uh, soft spot in my life, especially right now. So force, yeah. How many times have we exhausted ourselves pushing and striving and trying to make things happen? Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> yeah. I really love that he brings in Yoda. Mm. You know, there is, there is no try. It's do or do not. And that, I mean, when I first learned about feminine masculine energies and noticed how my body was so wired to really use the masculine force all the time, which was working against a lot of my inner nature. And I didn't understand why I'd be, I'd get to the weekend. I could go, you know, 12 hour days, five days a week. And then Saturday I couldn't get off the couch. So yeah, that's a whole different ball game. So I, I just, um, I'd like to just ask, you know, how does force show up in your body? to whoever's listening, to you, to me. For me, it was a lot of um, noticing that my fists would be clenched, even when I would wake up in the middle of the night, they were like this versus relaxed. You know, I um, my shoulders would get hunched and there was a lot of um, uh, strength to everything I did because I, I needed, I was the one responsible for everything. And it was my job to make sure everything was done and done perfectly well. So it was this constant outward pouring of energy, which is not how we're designed to be anymore. Well, I mean, so it do had you a have, so for, for everyone, do you have just a couple of quick exercises that people could do to feel that and then release it? Yeah, we can play with it. Uh, oh, and we did this just last week. And I love that Aikido gets to be a part of this conversation today, or maybe it will be, because um, you know, I don't want to force anything. Um, so when, an example, and, and you can do this with different parts of your body, like for me, where my sh I feel my shoulders going up, I go, okay, you want to go up? Let's go up. Let's make sure that I have no neck and I can't hardly talk, right? Or my hand's really, really tight. And then you get to the point where you go, ah, and just breathe. And really breathe. Like by the third breath, your shoulders should have moved down several inches. Your hands should feel a different level of energy flowing through them or not, but that they will feel a sense of calm and relaxation. The one that we did last week, which I love, is taking your right hand and making this tight, tight fist, and then taking your left hand and going, okay, open up, open up. Come on, I wanna open you up. And you're like going, e -e, I'm not gonna let you. So there's like this fight. And this is what a lot of our life is like, energy. However, if we just take our left hand and put it underneath or put it on top, how you can feel the, the clenching, like just relaxing. Did you notice that? You know, there's something about, I'm not trying to open you. I'm going to let you open on your own. And it makes the whole system relax. 
So that's those are a couple of things that I remember. But the main thing is to notice it and go, hello, without the judgy, because that's another way of just making it wrong. But going, hello, body. I know, I know you you are feeling some stress. <laughs> and breathing into it like with loving, caring energy. So those are the two I'd recommend. Nice. Hmm. It's one way to get right into majesty for me. It goes. Yeah. So when we are then moving and, you know, it's not good or bad. Each of these shadow gift and Cidic state, they, we flow between all of them. They're just different facets of consciousness that we're experiencing in the totality of our human experience. Yeah. And so, but you see them pretty abruptly out there and in here in our own bodies um so i i you know yeah yeah no and and i want to um say that force had its place i love the the whole conversation of it helped our evolutionary path to force our spine upright so that we would move from being in the ape family into this more human where our brain was developed differently because of this upward thing. It also has been, it's the force behind a male erection. It's the force that allows plants to crack open from seeds and grow into these beautiful trees or whatever. That kind of force has its place. But our body, it doesn't need that kind anymore. Right. So there's a, like, hello, don't quite need that anymore, but it's still in our DNA. Well, um, I'm going to quote Richard Rudd here from the 64, or from uh, Gene Keys. And he says, force is always rooted in the mind, whereas power is from the belly. Yeah. And power is natural. It's grounded and universally connected to all life flowing as it does from the great umbil umbilical center within your being. So you can kind of feel the difference that force is like something that we feel like we must do. Whereas the belly we're trusting life and it's, it's like a eternal spring. <laughs> it is. If we, yeah. yeah. And so many of our security issues, right. Are in our belly are, do I belong? Am I loved? I mean, a lot of that we hold, down there too so those fears so if we can hold the ah oh, this is the i i would rather run through life or walk or dance through life with with a soft open trusting belly any day it's well, I, 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 it's a great thing to think about i'm not so sure i'm there <laughs> well and and isn't that empowerment i would call that empowerment yeah and which I is don't... what yeah, which is what leads to the strength of no strength or, oh, I forget who the Native American chief that was asked about um, strength. And he says, well, masculine and feminine strength are two different things. Masculine strength looks like literally being able to drag a buffalo back to camp, you know, to cook it and skin it and stuff. Um, Feminine strength isn't seen. It It's more likened, and I love it that he actually said this, it's more alike uh, to magic. Mm. Because we can't see feminine strength. We can feel it. We can see it in action as a baby is born or as uh, loving um, actions shift the energy in the space. Oh, I'm hot now. Woo. Woo. <laughs> so feminine strength, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Deborah, tell me a little bit more about how you see um, how beauty, the gift of um, the gift of strength plays out after you like release from that force. I think it's what naturally arises beauty, power, majesty, it all just is. 
when we stop trying to make it so or uh, wanting it to be so, you know, it's that we are that. And um, it's getting out of our own way to be that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I love the analogy that easy is right. Oh, oh thank you for bringing that forth because that's such a great yeah. quote. And when I first read it years ago, I was like, that sounds but like why, why do we Joseph like Campbell follow your bliss and you'll get to, and, you know, and I'm like, Oh, come on. It's it's, and that's where the effortlessness, I mean, it's, there is effort, there's tenacity and then there's flow. And so I always, I kind of giggle cause I think about how, when I would try to, when I was in a situation where I, I just wanted to keep making it work. And I was like, it's kind of like, feeling like a square peg in a round hole. And I'm like, I can't force this anymore. Like this is not where I need to be. And so I really understood, okay, I just need to pivot. Like it's Uh, okay. I just take the time to witness, okay, this, can we, can we do something a little bit easier to our system? That's like more in alignment. (laughs) Yeah. And as opposed to trying to make something happen. Right. And uh, it brings me back to all the work I've done with the art of feminine presence. You know, thank you, Rachel Jane. So there's there's a flow that happens when we we inhale and we exhale. And when we flex our spine, which Richard also speaks to in a couple places of, you know, we open and so our our spine is like curved there and then we like an exhale and it curves back the other way so that we're making we're keeping our spine flexible which allows this to all move and we very often and we can do it very subtly by just kind of tilting our pelvic pelvic bowl and it's an interesting way to for me to notice when i'm arched one way and i'm pouring all my energy if you think about it like you've got a bowl and you're arched forward and you're pouring it all out well, well, wait a minute, you know, can I hold back and give myself some and then pour some out? So you're kind of like playing with that essence that we carry in our pelvic bowl. Mm. Does that make sense? And to me, when my, when I'm in my majesty space, it feels like it's like my pelvic bowl or my cauldron, I love to call it that is full. And it's, overflowing and I can tip some towards you and I can give some back to me and I can pour it into the collective unified field, you know, but um, it's something that I'm practicing doing all the time, like on the airplane last week and sitting in the middle of that workshop. And it's, it helps me to feel like I'm nourishing or keeping my pump primed does that make sense you know ready to well that's I think is part of your centering practice and so when you get in that space and it's your center that's where your strength is absolutely so maybe maybe um talk a little bit is do they talk about that in Aikido where you that's where you find your strength and your balance and your oh yeah because before you do any interaction or before you start to notice the attack coming towards you how you know everybody had their own way to drop in which is basically drop down to our center of gravity which you know for women is about three inches below the belly button and for men about two inches and really feel that but we also did a thing that we learned where we sent our the energy down our legs through our feet into mother earth and at the same time sent the energy up into the heavens so that we could feel that we were so held and in alignment and that balancing we we learned to get into immediately because when you have something coming at you you don't have a lot of time to go oh, okay let me breathe in three inch you know yeah <laughs> so so it was fun and then the other thing i did was like I'm going to be open-hearted. I'm not going to be, because I was fearful in the beginning 
I was afraid of being attacked. I was afraid of that energy coming towards me. But I was like, no, I've got this. And the, which feels to me like the strength or the majesty coming through me. And once we, and everybody, we started with everybody doing their own thing. And then you could see everybody finding their own way to go and drop in. And it was so amazing to see the shifts because then immediately we were all like, I want what that person has. <laughs> so I want to cook up something with that person because there's a palpable energy field around them that is strong and clear. And when you can be in your majesty and attacks come toward you, what did you learn in Aikido? Like what, what's the gift? Oh man. Like when he tells the story in the 64 ways, it was so beautiful about it's the embracing, it's the meeting the attacker where they're at. And it was, to me, it was fearless. It was like, I've go ahead, bring it on. I can hold you while you're in that space of fear or anger or whatever. I'm okay. And that was such a shift because when I, I don't get there, obviously in some of my personal communications, I'm working on that. I think the more uh, close we are to somebody, it's harder to, to, to not, to get, to maintain center, you know, but anyway, I'm, I'll let you know as that works through. So as I was, as the attacker was coming to me, if I could just go, oh, and love on them. And actually when we did, um, we, we would actually do a dance. So as somebody is coming at you, you could like grab their arm and go, oh, is this the way you want to go? And turn around and I'd go with them in that direction that they were coming to me at versus this is the way to go my way. And you're going this way. And then there was a clash, right? Mm. Oh, it was an energetic and physical. And um, I felt very much an emotional acceptance of, mm. of the movement towards me that maybe I didn't welcome initially. Huh. Okay. I didn't welcome it initially. I'll be honest. So does that answer? Yeah. What a shift though, to be able uh, to, to witness that. So it's not force against force, right. it's the force and then the softness. And that's the strength of the softness to move energy to a different place where then you're you can sit in your majesty and be, you know. Yeah, totally held. And you, and you care for your attacker. You protect the attacker, which I find is an extra step. It's not just allowing their energy to flow by, which is what I thought it was originally. It's like right. loving them and guiding them with their process. Oh, it's it, interestingly, you and I know and love the great, great grandmother tree out in front, that big, huge I don't know, 120 year old oak tree. So it's the same thing when the wind comes and she just, ah, she lets the wind move through her and she doesn't, I mean, she does lose a branch here and there, but I mean, like she's, she's not fighting it, right? She's not bracing. She's designed to kind of um, flow. flow. Yeah. Stands strong, but continues to just flow with it yeah <clears throat> so do you want to talk anything else about uh the majesty aspect mm -hmm. that we may not have touched on in some ways it's even easier than strength uh sometimes i because it's one of the things I journal about every week when I plan my week. It's one of the core desired energies I want to call forth in my activities for the week. So um, it's it's like this uh, the strength of no action. It's the allowing it to be so. So to me, it's like, of course, if you think about a king or a queen, everything is everything is done. There's nothing I need to do. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I still do have responsibilities of 
you know, bringing peace or whatever my vision is. Right. But it is not a, I have to go out and do it all myself. In fact, where can I receive the support to help me get this done? What? Yeah, I love it. I, Richard says that true strength, strength lies in emptiness. Oh, maybe that's why it feels easier to me. Cause when I tap into it, it's like, it's an allowing it's a, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Any other beautiful quotes you got there circled? I had mm -hmm. one. Well, I find it. It's interesting that this is connected to the programming partner of 34, which is all on the C. Or, no, sorry. 34 is programming partner is the 20th, which is all on presence. And so the, this city requires an individual to transcend that genetic fear of survival by bringing their presence fully into every moment. That's why presence partners with this one. And so that makes, they can, yeah. They can be fully in their presence and their majesty and open their heart and allow life to live through us, you know, like. Which is a flow, which is why he calls it the divine energy that constantly moves through the human form. And I was like, oh, that feels so good. It feels so good to me. And yeah. how would it be if we could model that, teach that, be that, so that each of the people that we come in contact with feels like they can relax into theirs as well? Because you know how we're tuning forks for one another. Right. Oh. So I love this other quote. This is really about energy efficiency at its finest, but it's the result is a pure fusion as spirit enters matter and imbues it with the divinity. So you can just feel the divinity in your daily life. Yeah. And that's where we're bringing heaven on earth. Because we're living, breathing it. Okay. So I'm kind of on a mudra kick. Can okay. I do the mudra? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> mudra for majesty. And I didn't look up presence, but um, for majesty, it's you just put your hands like you're folding your hands and then you make the little steeple. Remember how you used to do that as a kid with your two index fingers touching and allow them to be upright up against your heart space. But the trick is, do you want to fold your right or your which feels more natural to you um my left over my right feels oh natural. interesting so that's your feminine you're calling your queen in when you have your left over your right mine feels more feminine when I have my right over my left which is my masculine and so I'm practicing okay can I switch that Ooh. you know can I hold it and breathe into that in the opposite and it depends on what we're calling in more in that moment too right more of the feminine more of the masculine so um i'm calling in more feminine right now <laughs> so yeah so playing with the majesty that is within and what wants to even be strengthened and called into more deeply and then just allowing it to be there and allowing, relaxing into it is what it feels like to me, right? Yeah. Mm, that feels very majestic. I love it. Ah, and whether or not it's in your chart, it doesn't matter. I think this is something for all of us to play with as we allow more of that energy flow to be within us, the divine flow, the divine feminine flow, ah, the letting go of forcing. Yes. Um, are you feeling any card decks? Ooh, if you are. Yes. So um, choose one, two, or three. Two. Interesting. You chose the Cosmic Ascension Consciousness deck. Of course. Cosmic Conscious Ascension Deck. And this is by Jamie Price. Hmm. 
I don't know that deck. This will be fun. This is, yeah, it's a light language activation card deck that I, um, that I, I found her. She's delightful and so super, so super fun. So we'll be finishing out to see what is coming through. Are you feeling top, middle, or back? Back. All right. Here we go. Oh, of course. Divinity. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. I love it. No, I know. I know. Right. Um, let me look up. And this is about awareness. This one is about awareness. And oh, this is so nice, you guys. This is really beautiful. It's divinity. And it's, I am divine. All life is divine. And as you focus upon the divinity of yourself, others, and all experience, you will begin to perceive the world through love. Mm. This is your divine nature. Each challenge or triumph expands you towards greater understanding of your capacity, uh, capability, and courage. Each experience that is less than love is your opportunity to create change through the divine power of love within you. This card is reminding you that all that you are is divine. The Lyarians found the courage to see the sacred within the self and all life. Every person, experience, thought, and creation is also composed of divinity, for source permeates all life. You are not judged as right or wrong. You benefit from all experience. And as you seek to perceive all of life through the perspective of divinity, everything becomes sacred to you. Now, this shift in perspective to see all life as sacred creates a natural balance of humility, compassion, and confidence. The light language helps you to release blocks to your divinity that keep you from feeling separate or less than. It is your activating your inherent nature as a divine creative force of love. So this is about letting go of feeling better than or less than. This is about avoiding negative feelings that does not honor your complete divinity because you are capable and supported by vast unseen energy and your divinity is inherent. You are already deserving. Mm. You know, what I loved is how much it spoke to the programming partner of self-assurance. You know, I mean, the self-assurance is what gives us the strength to step fully into the majesty. And I am loving that, you know, I, when we allow, oh man, I've got chills. When we, <laughs> when we allow this information to come forth, um, by just, by just, well, maybe expecting it on some level, like what was that, uh, quote years ago, expect miracles, you know, don't pray for them, just expect them. And yeah. then, and thank for whenever, you know, thank for even before they come, cause they are coming. So, um, wow, this was a good one. I really enjoyed this. And I, hope in some ways there's some nuggets here for each person who t tunes in. So thank you, darling. Thank you. Mm -mm. Till next Our time. Next time. Okay. See ya.